All right, everything goes this way, and I'm not doing it the other way. As I've been doing this more and getting the enjoyment out of the Reptarium, I have been less excited about opening up a snake rack. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Today, I'm gonna to talk about something that's pretty controversial, rack systems. That's right, I wanna to talk to you guys about rack systems. Now, I've mentioned before that I'm gonna to try to do this town hall with a handful of like industry people, naturalistic people, YouTubers, a bunch of different things where we can start the conversation about rack systems. Now with any luck, that will happen at the end of May or sometime in June. I'm waiting to just find out when it works for everyone. Uh, in particular, I'm excited that Emily from Steak Discovery said that she wants to be a part of it. So I wanna make sure that her schedule works. We're gonna have Kenan from Cap Kenan up, gonna have my buddy Forrest, Kevin from Nerd, a bunch of cool people. So regardless, the idea behind it is what can we do to kind of change not only the perception of racks, but also maybe the industry standard of what racks mean? Now let me start by saying that there's a few things to consider when you're talking about a snake rack. You want what's best for the snake, you want what's best for the keeper, and you want what's best for the hobby. And those aren't always the same thing. And I understand that. I wanna make perfectly clear that I've been keeping snakes in racks, which are kind of what we would call minimalistic or commercial type industry standards, whatever the case be. And the vast majority of people that breed snakes breed them the same way. But I understand that sometimes my exposure means I should be held to a different standard and maybe I need to relook at the way I think about things. And sometimes we have to realize what's best for the animal or what can work with the animal isn't always what's best for the image of working with the animal. And maybe that's kind of where I've gotten to the point, right? I've always said that my journey in reptiles is always an evolution. And sometimes people will actually say that I don't listen to critics, which couldn't be further from the truth. Everyone that knows me and has spent any time with me realizes that I'm always listening to the critics. Now let me say, if you come at me and say that right off the bat that I'm a terrible person and that you hate me and that you want me to change that's probably not constructive criticism. But if you come at me and say, Brian, I actually think that you should keep your animals in a different way because of this and you have reasonable reasons, of course I'm gonna listen and I have listened. And before I get too deep into this, I do wanna tell you that I think that I want to change the way I do things. Is it right for the industry to have a standard? I'm not 100% sure. That's part of what this panel is gonna do. But I wanna talk about my feelings, my personal feelings, not only where I am as a keeper of reptiles, but also with the feedback and where I'm at on this platform that you guys are watching that. And what I mean by that is that I think that I have to have a better image for the animals for the betterment of the hobby itself even if that isn't really what's good for BHB, and potentially what doesn't really even matter for the animals that much. And what I mean by that is that sometimes we do anthropomorphism, which basically means that we attach our human emotion to an animal rather than thinking about what's best just for that animal, right? So if we put a plant in a ball python's cage, that makes us feel better about keeping that animal in that cage rather than really what the animal cares about because the truth is that ball python probably doesn't really care about that plant. But listen, I don't want you to think Think that it's not important how we feel about caring for animals because there is that too right so even though an animal may not care if there's a fake plant in the cage if it makes us feel better and it makes our hobby look better then maybe that flake plant is a good idea these are all things that are going through my head that I want to share with you and kind of come clean not only with the way I feel but also with the way you guys feel so oftentimes what happens is if I don't express the way I feel you guys assume I only feel a certain way and that's not what I want to have happen at all and I have to be careful with how I express myself because I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. I don't want to tell people that do keep snake racks, which are tens of thousands of people around the world, that they're doing something wrong. I don't know what the answer is. What I'm going to tell you is how I feel about myself and I want to come clean about that. I want to tell you guys what's been on my mind for several months. That's since a lot of people have reached out to me about the rack system. Although I have listened to that, the truth is I've been evolving to a different way of keeping animals. Hence, the Reptarium. And let me tell you, once you start getting into more naturalistic big cages and stuff like that, it is addictive. It's nice to see the animals crawl around and use things like rocks and trees and crevices. It's awesome and it's something that I've become unbelievably passionate about. But it's not like I can just change overnight, right? It's not like I can just go, all right, everything goes this way and I'm not doing it the other way. It's about an evolution, it's about time and it's also about doing things intelligently. We have to think about it, we have to decide and then we have 
have to make that type of change, which could take time. I said it a year and a half ago that give me time and I'm gonna prove that I wanna do something like the Reptarium. It took me close to a year to get it done, but here I am standing in the Reptarium. So let's go ahead and get into the rack situation. This is the way we keep an adult corn snake right here, an absolutely beautiful snake. And obviously we are keeping it in a relatively minimalistic cage. It has a water dish, it has bedding, and it has a hot spot. And that's basically about it. Now a lot of people have talked about hide boxes in snakes like this. And what I've mentioned in the past, if you're talking about just what a snake needs, maybe it's minimalistic needs. I, I'm not 100% sure. Again, that's something that I've been struggling with a lot lately. But the fact is, is that this box itself is kind of used as a hide box because once it's pushed in it feels comfortable in there. It kind of says kind of a little bit like if you found a snake in a tree stump you wouldn't find a hide box in that tree stump right? But with that being said I'm not opposed to putting a hide box in there and as a matter of fact we may end up in that direction and the truth is is that as I've been doing this more and getting the enjoyment out of the Reptarium I have been less excited about opening up a snake rack. I'm not gonna lie, and some people may be surprised to hear that. Some people may be upset at me that I've said it because I just said it. Yes, I am not that excited about opening up this box. Now, I'm super excited about how beautiful this snake is, and I'm super excited about hatching eggs and breeding and doing all those types of things, but I would like to do it in a way that I personally feel better about it. Again, is it totally making the animal's health better? That's a conversation that we continue to need to have, and I wanna start with this town hall panel. The truth is, is that I want what's best for me and what's best for our hobby. And maybe even though this snake right here might do completely fine without climbing and rocks and all the enrichment part of things, the truth is is that the hobby would do better if a guy like me actually provided that because it's a better image, if you get my point. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. You may say snap your fingers, change everything, and we're all good, right? Well listen, there's a whole bunch of things to consider. Number one, it costs a lot of money to change things. It's gonna take time to change things. And then where do I wanna change it? You know, the one thing that concerns me the most and why this isn't an easy topic and there isn't an easy solution is let's say, instead of keeping a rack like this that keeps 30 tubs in this rack, I wanna keep 10 animals in the same area, a little bit more higher enrichment, a little bit more naturalistic and breed them that way. That means that I basically have the same expenses in the same area, but I only have a third of the amount of animals, which means that it costs me more money to produce those animals. And then somehow I have to justify that cost onto people that are buying from me. I've made this argument before. Would you be willing to buy a $20 gecko for $30 if it was produced more naturalistically? And the truth is, is there's probably only a small amount amount of the market that would actually do that. But that's okay because I'm not doing BHB for the money anyways. I'm doing BHB for myself, for my crew, for the hobby and all kinds of stuff like that. Now I do have to somehow make enough money to pay my crew, right? Because I can't lose money on BHB. That wouldn't make any sense. So it's a little bit more complicated than the surface is. And I think that that's why we have to dove into it and figure out what's best for everybody, right? What's best for the animal, what's best for me, what's best for the hobby. And that's why I'm starting to talk to you about it. And these are the types of things I want to talk about at the panel. Let's talk about this panel really quick. We're gonna have it at Aquascape in Chicago. And there's gonna be the ability to maybe 50 or even 100 people to attend. We will not charge anybody for attending, but there will be moderators. We'll allow audience participation with questions. We also wanna live stream it on this channel. And by the way, all proceeds from the live stream and anything else, we're not gonna charge to get in. But if there is any other money, it's gonna go towards a charity. Let me know in the comments what charity you think I should donate it to. Uh, we'll continue to look on that. The point is the live stream will have the ability to also have a live chat feature where you can ask questions. A moderator can actually ask us the questions that you're asking. The live audience can ask questions. And this panel of group of people will be able to just kind of discuss this as adults. Not an argument. I don't want anyone to win this conversation. I want the hobby to win this conversation. And again, I've been thinking about this for a long time, people. And I know it's hard to believe because I keep snakes in racks like this and have for over 30 years. It's hard for people to understand that I am really concerned about about the image that we're giving off. A lot of countries in Europe, you're not even allowed to keep snakes and racks. Is that gonna eventually be the case in America? So maybe as a hobby, we need to be proactive and start making some changes that are gonna be good for everyone, including the hobby. So I want to start to get this off my chest. Let me in the comments what you're thinking so far.
And like I mentioned, I want to be completely honest with you guys. You know, I've been doing BHB and breeding snakes for almost 30 years. I've always talked about the fact that I don't like selling snakes. Now, I'm appreciative of everyone that buys animals and supports BHB, but I personally am not a fan of it just because, I don't know, that's not why I do BHB. And the truth is, is that I'm conflicted about what the future of BHB is. I've talked about the fact that racks don't really excite me anymore. And let me just be clear, I'm never going to throw my friends under the bus that keep snakes and racks because I want to create the conversation. I don't want to be us against them. I don't want to be vitriolic because I think that's one of the problems right now is that it is this kind of got you society where I'm saying, oh, he's bad, he's bad, I'm good, right? I don't want to do that. What I'm trying to say is I don't know what the future of BHB is. The truth is, if it wasn't for the fact that I have an amazing crew, that this is their career. This is how they pay their bills. This is what they do. And I have a lot of responsibility when it comes to that. I will never lay them off. I will always have to find a way to transition to something else. So with that said, I can see BHB changing a lot. And over the next two, three, four, five years, I'm not going to phase BHB out, but I think it will be a very different company than it is today. Maybe not as much production. Maybe the cages and environments that I'm breeding them in will be completely different. I'm not 100% sure, but I want to be honest with you guys. I am always trying to think ahead, and the Reptarium really has changed my viewpoint of how I want to keep animals. That's not to say that how I want to keep animals is the best way or the only way. I'm just saying for me personally, I am enjoying these naturalistic cages, seeing the animals climb, seeing the animals use different heat gradients, seeing kind of that enrichment. It's something that I really love a tremendous amount, and it's something that I'm sure BHB will have to one day kind of incorporate. And that's why this town hall, I think, will be so amazing for me, as well as everyone else, is to talk about where we go from here. How do we not only do what's good for the animals and good for us, but also do what's good for the image of the reptile keeping hobby. Now, I'm not trying to say that I want you or anyone to think that I have all the answers, because I don't. Again, been doing this my whole life, and I still have more questions than I have answers. I'm speaking from my heart. I have listened to people that think I should do something different because of the image and the outreach that we have on this platform and other platforms. I also personally feel it is time for a change. But again, that change can't happen overnight. It's going to take time because it's not like I can just unplug everything and say, all right, well, all these animals need to go somewhere. The fact is it has to have a plan, and that plan is going to take time. And I want you guys to be part of the change that's going to happen. I want you to give me your suggestions. I want your encouragement while I'm going through this and together we can make a better place because the truth is even though some people don't think it, all I want to do is what's best for these animals and what's best for the future. I want the next generation and the generation after that and the generation after that to be able to keep and enjoy these animals because I can't imagine a future without being surrounded by these animals and I certainly don't want my great grandkids or my great great grandkids to not be able to enjoy the same thing I do and I have to wonder if we continue down the path that we're doing much like Forrest said why we are keeping these animals what is the reason behind keeping them we may lose it all or at least lose a big portion of it so there's a lot of questions to be asked and there's a lot of answers to still be found but I hope that you guys will join me on the continuation of this conversation not only with the panel but moving forward I'm sorry that today didn't have a bunch of animals and a bunch of cool stuff or there really wasn't much of a story, but it was something I wanted to come clean, talk to you guys, share my ideas, and find out what you guys think. Do me a favor in the comments and let me know what you think about what I've said. Am I on the right track? Am I overreacting? Is all of this kind of getting to me? I don't know. I want to know from you guys what I should do, how I should go forward, and how we as a community can come together rather than ripping ourselves apart like we've done over the last little while. So that's it, guys. I'm ending the vlog. I'm going to leave it to you. Let me know what you think. Let's have this conversation in the comments as well as moving forward. Have a wonderful day. Your support is amazing. I love you guys so much. Be kind to someone. I promise I will see you tomorrow.